In today's video, we're going to be tucking the engine bay harness on the 720. For most of you who don't know, uh, the truck runs a harness that powers your headlights, your turn signals, and pretty much all your testers on the front end. Since I'm going to be fully rebuilding this truck from the ground up and painting the engine bay a custom color, it would be dumb not to relocate it. Um, not that it really benefits it in any way, just besides appearance. It's the only thing, is it gives it a cool look seeing less uh, or no wires at all. Now it shouldn't be too hard on this truck since it is a carbureted truck. Uh, so there is a lot less wires versus a fuel injected truck which has a lot more wires. You got eight more wires just let alone because of your injectors, if it's a four cylinder of course. Um, and then obviously you got more sensors on top of that and all that, so this should be very easy. But like I said, it should be easy. There's not a lot of information on these trucks on the internet as to how to do this since the people who used to do this are, aren't on the internet. Um, so. I guess we're just gonna have to do it from scratch and see what works and what doesn't. If you have you no know, engine inside, it's a lot easier for you to do this, but if you do, just unplug everything that goes to the engine. As far as distributor wires, ignition coil wires, your choke wires for the carburetor, uh, little simple stuff like that, grounds obviously. As you can see, it all comes out of the firewall over here. So we're gonna try to keep it as close to stock location as possible, just be outside of the engine bay. Um, now this truck is going to be getting bagged and it's gonna be laying frame, so I have to be careful not to run anything very close to the tires, since there is a very high possibility that it could rub on the harness. But I guess the plan is to take the harness off. You can see it runs right here along the radiator support. Go through, back out, drill a hole somewhere over here on the side, bring it out through here, Tuck it up nice here, clamp it to the outside since we have a fender that, you know, goes all the way out, flows like the door. So we have quite a bit of space on the outside. Be able to run it outside through there, tuck it up under here. So it's going to be in the pretty much the factory location. It's not like we're moving it anywhere, but it's going to be nice and tucked and you won't really see it. For example, this piece of harness you won't see unless you get under here and start looking, which, you know, some people do, but not, not a lot of people do that. Now that we got everything removed from this side, you can see it's looking a whole lot better. I'm still not sure if I'm going to be keeping this tray. It, it is rusty, but I don't know if I'm going to be keeping it and just painting it black in order to mount the coils, or I'm going to get rid of it entirely and mount the coils on the side over here or in the bottom somewhere just so it looks cleaner, since this is really only here to hold the coils and to hold the charcoal canisters. But if this, not, if this isn't here, then there really isn't a reason for this to be here either. Now I'm going to be drilling a hole right here with this hole saw. This is a two and a half inch hole saw that I had laying around. Um, and it's pretty close to the factory grommet. Uh, so I'm not gonna close this grommet up in case I need to run wires for a sound system or anything like that to the battery, then that will be there. Now I'm gonna end up running the harness out of here. Now that we got it cut, now I'm gonna use this file and I'm gonna go around all the edges just to try to clean it up. And on top of that, I'm going to get some old vacuum line that I have laying around and I'm going to cut it down the center and I'm going to wrap it around just in case it ever does make contact. And that right there is the finished product. For this job, I highly recommend I use two people. So right here you can see this is the last of the harness. This belongs on that side. So the whole entire harness is already inside the truck. I had to remove a couple of interior pieces like this trim piece that comes down here. Now, not all trucks have it, only some. Uh, but if you don't have it, you're lucky. And if you, it's in the way, you gotta remove it. You gotta remove this panel over here on the side. And then you can see the whole harness is right here. So it's coming out of the hole. It's kinda hard to see up there. And I drilled my hole right there. So instead of it coming down from up here in the dash and going down to that hole, it's gonna come down and then go out to the side. Uh, so right now when I pull it all out, I'm gonna shove it back in that way and then pull the whole harness out. Since I am going to be bagging this truck, I want to make sure that nothing is un under here, under where the tire can grab it. So right here, I think it's pretty safe since the tires would hit here before they get to hit up here. Um, so that's not really that big of a deal, but I am going to be running wires down through here. So I'm going to have to make sure that I run them, you know, extend them forward a little bit and then try to run them down here because the tire will never hit here. It'll hit here before it ever hits over here. And then obviously got to make sure that I waterproof it 
and do all that since it's going to be exposed to the elements. Got a majority of it stripped down, and now I'm starting to get a pretty good idea of what I need and what I don't need. I also got these, just got some masking tape, and I just have it like this because I want to see how they're gonna sit. I want them to be not stretched and be being pulled, but I want them to be pretty tight and have a little bit of tension on them. That way, it looks clean in here, and there's not just wires dangling. So I have these two back here: the one for the starter, the one for the oil pressure and then this is going to get tucked up here this goes to the back from factory it gets tucked up like this so that's going to be like that you're not really going to be able to see it and then these i'm going to run them under the oil filter and then obviously these for the sensors for the water or the coolant i should say and then for the alternator I am going to be upgrading the alternator. I just threw the stock one back on for now. That way I can start it and drive it around the block, make sure everything's good. Uh, but I will be upgrading the alternator to a higher amperage one. Since this truck is a base model truck and doesn't have any extra gauges in here, I do want to throw in some ST interior, which is the plan. Um, so I mean, by ST, I mean, I'm going to be throwing in an ST center console with an oil pressure gauge and a voltage gauge and i would like for both of them to work i don't want dead gauges in there so what i'm doing right now is i'm wiring up the oil pressure gauge for when i do get the gauge i, I could just throw it in and it works this headlight i think is going to reach but i don't think this one is so i'm gonna have to cut this one and extend it to three wires so it's not bad at all i do however have half of the harness stripped all the way up to here so i got to finish stripping off all this because most of this is gonna not be used also another thing, the factory coil packs get mounted over here and over here with a little plate that goes here. Obviously there should be a bunch of holes here that I shaved. So those aren't there anymore. So I removed that on purpose because I don't want anything here. So I think I'm gonna try to test fit the radiator, put it in here, and then I'm gonna try my very best to hide the coil packs. Not really hide, but I'm gonna try to mount them down here on the side. Hopefully I have enough space and if I do, I'll mount them down here and I'll run my two wires down to there. Then that way when my harness runs, in here, I could just go straight down through this hole back here. Hopefully it works out. I did uh, run the distributor main harness, which is down here, and the ground. So those are going to be nicely tucked up tight against over here. So it's going to go right through the hole right there. That's going to be all good. Just got to clean everything up. And then I do have to extend this plug right here, which is only two wires, so it shouldn't be too bad. It's this guy right here. Now I have to extend all these wires about three foot. Um, so hopefully I have enough wire. I have about 100 feet of wire and we'll see if it's enough. I've already used a good amount in past projects, but worst comes to worst, I need more. I can go to the store and pick up some more. So I've been making progress now. I got this bottom section ran out of the frame. You can see it right there. Now I still need to wrap everything and do some wiring loom and, and you know tuck it more. And obviously I got to make sure that it doesn't rub, doesn't hit on anything. And it also goes up here. Obviously, it's just zip tied for now. We're going to have to figure out what we're going to do. Now, the wire that you need for your choke for your Weber carb is this red wire right here. Now, everyone is different, but I would recommend that you go with a test light or a voltmeter of some sort and check which one has power on the key. So to do that, you obviously check them all. There shouldn't be any power and if there is then okay that's constant power with your key off and then when you turn your key off come and check them again and whichever ones have 12 volts that's your ignition or your switch switched uh power so this red one right here for me is a switch power i know a lot of people say it's the blue one so i have a buddy that has his and his is the blue one so i cut my blue one and i wired it in and it turns out it's not power so i don't know why that is that way but uh, on mine it's the red one if you look, they tee in over here, or Y, whatever you want to call it. 
over here. So now I'm simply going to cut this and splice it into this black wire that I have running for the choke. And then that will be our key, or will be our choke wired up. Since all the choke really is, is a spring in here. Um, and with this, it kind of uh, heats up. And then once it heats up to so a certain temperature, it opens up or it collapses, vice versa. Now I have another buddy who said this is his power, this white wire, which is a plug that is supposed to be running to a little plug, a little adapter piece down here under the stock card. And that's where he got his power, so everyone is different. Now I have the whole harness all kind of taped up and roughly where I want it. Uh, so now I can go ahead and remove it all and then start to wrap it up. So what I did right here to keep it kind of bunched up in groups, I just used masking tape in the meantime. Um, like over here, and I'm going to use electrical tape instead of the masking tape. And then I'm going to simply wrap it all up, wrap it up with this one back here so it's nice and tight. I tried to make everything nice and tight, and then obviously I got to zip tie that up out of the way. I'll show you guys over here the side how I have it all roughly ran. Then I'm going to back. I'm going to go back and uh, wrap everything up as tight as I can. Not tight as in pulling, but tight as in right here. Instead of wrapping this all the way down and stopping and then starting again, I'll wrap this all the way up to this plug and then wrap it down all the way up to that plug so there's not a lot of wiggle room and it only fits in one way. Well, there you guys go. This is what the finished product looks like. Now, I do wish in some spots like this that I would have used, obviously you can see it's still not done, uh, but I wish in a couple spots like this, I would have done a different style tape. They sell some that's like a mat, and it kind of looks like a cloth, even though it's not. Uh, so I would have done that on the parts you see, and then over here doesn't really matter, but I didn't know this is my first time doing it, but like I said, next time I'll do that. It'll look a lot better. I definitely still have to button up a lot of uh, things in here, like this vacuum line for the advanced timing. So I gotta cut this, shorten it, tuck it so you don't really see it. I gotta get a smaller battery. Uh, so this is the one that came with the truck, but it's not the factory size that it needs. Factory, they run a smaller one. Uh, so right now I can't even close the hood properly. So I have to get a smaller battery. I have to clean up a bunch of stuff, but you guys can see like this little sensor guy. So that's going to complete this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comment section below. And I'll try to answer them to the best of my abilities. Uh, but with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.